I wanted to talk a bit about mold and mold exposure as a potential cause for chronic ill health. Um, this mold is ubiquitous, and many people are suffering from the effects of mold. This is uh, without question. Mold triggers my cell activation syndrome. Many people suffering from that. Um, so it has to be part of a the differential diagnosis for chronic ill health. Um, and it's shocking, really, how many people have mold exposure as a, as a trigger and as an ongoing mediator for keeping themselves in an inflamed state, producing the illness called chronic inflammatory response syndrome, or SIRS. Um, there is a article, a 34-page article on my website um, describing the diagnosis and treatment of mold illness, um, or the SIRS, it's, it's called the SIRS document, it's on my website somewhere. Um, so people who think they've got mold exposure, um, they need to, I would recommend the following steps. A, um, do the SIRS questionnaire, it's a questionnaire that can be found on my website as well, and if you just Google SIRS um, questions, it, it comes up. See if you fulfill the criteria um, for the potential diagnosis of mold illness, uh, because some of those symptoms are not just for mold illness. So, uh, and some are admitted. Some of the more psychiatric-based questions that can um, that can arise from mold aren't on that questionnaire. So, it's not a the questionnaire itself isn't uh, enough, but it's a good start. If you have more than eight symptoms in more than six of the subtypes on the questionnaire, consider mold as a potential uh, differential diagnosis. The second thing you can do is a visual contrast test. This too can be uh, Googled. Uh, Dr. Shoemaker's website has access to a computerized PCS test. Take that test. If you fail it, consider mold as a potential uh, illness, a potential a reason for you feeling unwell. And then, of course, the most important is exposure. If you know that you've got a basement full of mold, or you've got a bathroom full of mold, or your um, or your bedroom has mold on the windows from condensation, um, you have to consider that in your differential. Um, not everybody gets sick from mold. Some get allergies from mold, but some people get true inflammatory response illness. It's been estimated that only 25% of people will have a significant uh, illness from mold, but in my experience, it's more than that. And uh, people often downplay how potent mold and the mycotoxins produced by mold are in producing chronic ill health. So exposure, history, are you exposed to mold? Is it visible mold? Now, if it's not visible, uh, it can be hidden. And so you often have to do your own homework um, and call in a mold inspector in order to look for the potential sources of mold. So things you can do, look up, look at pot lights. Is there a brown ring around your pot light? Are you, do you have buckled baseboards? Do you have black mold on your window frames? Is there mold in the grout when you're sharp? Do you have a front-end loading washing machine that smells musty? Does your house smell musty? Is there any potential mold in your air conditioning system? Um, do you have a, a, a food composter in your um, kitchen? A lot of mold grows there. Um, and if you aren't sure, um, it's important that you call in a uh, mold inspector, a visual inspector, somebody who comes in armed with specific tools, an infrared camera, is able to actually measure the, um, the dryness or wetness of drywall, who has the equipment to put a little hole through the drywall if he suspects mold behind, and who examines your home from the attic, actually yes, goes into the attic, takes a look around, looks at the insulation, looks at the condensation potential, is your upstairs attic vented? A lot of the homes that we built in the, in the Russian Calgary here in 2009-2010, uh, including my own, by the way, didn't have venting, and condensation and wetness um, were ubiquitous. And um, many people didn't discover the mold until many years later. So get a good visual inspection. Somebody comes in, goes from the attic to the basement, goes inside and outside, 
looks in multiple areas. There are, if you look, go online, you'll see how to do a, a visual inspection. A lot of it you can do yourself. Then you want somebody to, or yourself, to do what's called ERMI test, which is mold spore counts. And you want to do it either through a vacuum, uh, collecting dust from carpets, or a swiffer club collecting dust off the floors uh, of particular areas. And we recommend living rooms and um, bedrooms first. Some people do it in the basements, although it's not often recommended because a lot of basements are moldy, but in my experience it's important to know if your basement is moldy because through your furnace you will be um, pulling in mold and, and pushing them throughout the house. Molds will also travel from the basement upward through convection currents when your home um, heats up. And so if the basement is a source, you want to know exactly how bad it is. So once you've done the visual inspection, once you've done ERMI testing, looking for mold spores, once you've found mold or not, uh, the next step in the progression of sort of trying to make the diagnosis if you're highly suspected is to do what we call are the cytokine tests. And those are not done in Canadian labs, so you have to send them out. They, we call them the Shoemaker panel, and we measure things like C4A, TGF, beta, 1, MMP9, Fair Jeff, MSH, and we do a nasal swab for something called Mark Pons, which is a staph coagulase negative in, in, uh, um, uh, that it's a staph that lives in the nasal passages. It doesn't produce overt nasal symptoms, but can have significant cognitive effects and mitochondrial effects on your, um, on your symptoms. Um, so we do that in those inflammatory markers, and in the recent advance has been very controversial use of urinary mycotoxin testing. Uh, the, in the original workup by Dr. Shoemaker, he poo-pooed and did not believe that urinary mycotoxin uh, testing had any role to play in the diagnosis of mast cell, uh, in the diagnosis of mold illness. He has personally... Um, moved on to transcriptomics testing for definitive diagnosis, but um, many other clinicians do do urine mycotoxin testing and see if there are any metabolites of mold in the urine. And this is used quite, quite extensively by the sort of breakaway group that, that doesn't adhere strictly to the Shoemaker protocol. There's two schools, there's the shoemaker purists, and then there's the groups that have broken away. Like any good movement, there's always two camps. Can't get away from that. Support and challenge. It exists throughout nature, it exists throughout medicine, it exists throughout clinical uh, diagnosis and treatment. So if you have a hist if you have a symptom profile that's suggested through the questionnaire, if you have a positive VCS test, if you have any signs of mold in your home, if your, P, uh, your, um, your testing for, dust, for mold spores in your home are positive, if your urine mycotoxin te tests are positive and your shoemaker labs are very positive, it's very highly likely that mold is playing a role in your illness and you need to find a practitioner who knows how to treat it. Um, the treatment is um, extensive. Um, requires lots of steps and has to be followed in a specific sequence. Um, otherwise, you can um, overload the detox pathways and get into um, s increased symptom expression and feeling worse, not better. Thank you.